And then you come up with a calculation of where to exit, which came out to 1845. And once again, we got short. We placed our stop at pl stop placement number one and then came up with a calculation where to cover. And look what happened. The minute we covered, the very next couple of days, we went back up. So this was a quick 71 cents during that same day. Our next trade was in BXP. This was going long on the third, the very same day. We went long at 87.51, exited the next day at 88.48, made nearly a point on this particular trade. Now this is where I want to show an example of where you can actually apply uh, two different strategies. Uh, now this particular strategy, we posted a buy signal in BXP using strategy number four. All right, We're above the buy sell line, and here's our setup bar according to all the calculations to go long using strategy number four. Now we went long once we traded above that valid setup bar at 87.51. Here's the two options where you have to place your stop, either at stop placement number two or stop placement number one. We have been placing our stops at stop placement number one. We're being more conservative. And then we came up with a calculation to exit at 88.48. So as you can see, in two days we made a quick point. All right. But one thing we want to mention is that, once again, for you traders who like to be in there for the longer trade, well, there's another trade that took place the day before, which we did not post, though. But this covers the question of which I, I talked about in the email today, where you know, you're still going to get, get setups and signals in stocks that we do not post. You know, there, there can be 10 times more signals than what you're seeing on a nightly basis. We just, in, in my opinion, I won't post them because I feel they may not have the highest probability for success. But it doesn't mean that they might not turn out right. Now, here was a perfect uh, strategy number one setup. If you look right here, this is, even though I don't have it circled, this is a perfect and valid setup bar for strategy number one. Okay, and remember, if you don't know the rules to strategy number one, I urge you to go to the video learning section and you can, you can find out how this would have been a setup bar. And this means what you would have done is you would have gone long once we traded above that, which would have been right here roughly around the 8650 level. And you would still be in that trade. The trade calls for you to exit, once we get up to these exit signs up here, roughly about 91 and a half. So this is where we say it's up to you to learn what style of a trader you are because not only did we take the quick trade, which is a strategy number four, there was also a strategy number one signal the day prior to it. And you could have taken that signal if you would learn all the uh, rules and regulations for that particular strategy and you could have entered BXP and you've had a, uh, you would have uh, about a good five point profit right now. Okay. So this was a quick trade in BXP where we took about a point or so. Now our last trade is a very interesting example here. This is an SCG strategy number four. Once again, we went long on the third and we got stopped out the very same day. We lost a small, a small loss, 44 cents. But this is where, once again, by learning the strategies and learning all the different variables and, and, and by paper trading and through experience, you can see which stop placement you would rather use. Now, we've been using stop placement number one because we've been playing it conservatively and because we trade other things. I trade the, uh, the E-mini and the Forex markets. But if you're just focusing on stocks, you may have wanted to give yourself a little bit more room from watching the stocks and seeing how they trade in the, in the different... Uh, movements and fluctuations and the volatility and you might have said you know what instead of using stop placement number one i'm going to use stop placement number two and let's see what would have happened well here's our setup bar this is the only bar that meets all of the qualifications and we went long the next bar once we went traded above that which was at 4118 and as you can see we placed our stop right here and look what happened we got stopped out that day Okay, for a quick loss of 44 cents. But had we used stop placement number two and given ourselves a little bit more room, look what would have happened. We'd still be in the trade. And here's our calculated exit level at 41.59, and we would have exited today. And we would have had a nice gain, okay, roughly about half a point or so. So this is why it takes, you know, time to learn all the different variables, all the different ways in which you can become a part of the process. That's why I don't just want you to mirror what I'm trading. I want you to learn these concepts and techniques just the way they were taught to me, and then you can apply them to whatever setups that you see, even though I may not be posting them. Okay? Now, had you 
seen this stock, if say you liked it in particular, and that uh, you maybe you were uh, following this stock and you saw the way it moves, you would have said maybe over time that this should be a stop two placement and you would have had a nice trade in a couple of days. Okay, so let's recap here the, the trades we took. We had a total of five trades that we took from the nightly signals. Four of those were long trades, one was short. Now out of those five trades, four were winners and one was a loser. And the, the short trade was not the loser. The, uh, the One of the long trades was the loser, as you saw in SCG. Now the points made or lost this week were two and a half points. Now I know that doesn't seem like a lot because we're trading the small, you know, the, the, the small uh, strategy here uh, with the uh, small gain strategy number four. But remember, we're all about consistency. And let's say you had traded uh, as little as 500 shares on these positions this week. Well, you would have had like $1,200 uh, gain this past week. And if you, uh, you know, add that up to a month, that's close to $5,000 a month. And that's just off of these small, consistent gains. So that's what our edge is here. We're trying to teach you and instill in you this, this edge of consistency. You know, so many uh, trading schools and, and teachers and gurus are trying to teach you how to hit these home runs and they're saying they can make you three, four, five percent a year. You know, I, I've been trading long enough to know that you may be able to do that, but ultimately you're going to be carrying a lot of risk and you can give that all back. So what we want you to do is learn how to trade with consistency. So over time, you'll be around 10, 20, 30 years of trading instead of, you know, having a great one year or two years and then having your whole account wiped out. That's why we ask you to learn these strategies. Go to our video learning section and learn that we have a number of strategies to learn, all with different personalities, and learn which one, uh, and learn and see which one best suits you. And then paper trade that strategy for a while. You don't have to take all the signals that you see me post. Just paper trade them, and then when you feel comfortable, begin to trade with a really small share size. Okay? Our edge here is consistency. We're looking to hit singles, not home runs. Now, if you have any questions concerning what I went over here today or anything on our website, please do not hesitate to email me at stephenprimo at specialisttrading.com. Lastly, I ask that you take one last look at my disclaimer. I showed you a lot of performance results from my trades this past week, but remember, we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I showed you will be repeated in the future. And we wish that you all have a safe and relaxing weekend. Remember, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me, and we'll see you here next week. Bye-bye.